Hello friends, uh, this is Dr. Rajiv Dhawan, your ENT faculty and I have my microbiology colleague with me, Dr. Mamta Java. So we are here to discuss an integrated question of ENT and microbiology and the question is about a 5 year old child who has presented with fever, sore throat, bull neck and the examination finding of oropharynx is given in the picture. And the question is, what is the conclusive method to diagnose the most likely causative organism of this child's condition? Choices are A. Gram stain of throat swab B. Albert stain C. Culture on potassium telluride agar or toxigenicity test Guys, if you look at this oropharyngeal examination, you can see a whitish membrane and there is a high index of clinical suspicion of diphtheria considering the child who is 5 year, there is fever, there is bull neck all the points are favoring the clinical diagnosis of diphtheria however, we need to prove it so we take a throat swab and send to the microbiology colleague and I will request Dr. Mamta Java to enlighten us about what is the right choice out of these four. Thank you sir. So guys, as sir said that there is a high index of clinical suspicion of diphtheria in this patient. We need to seal the diagnosis as diphtheria only when we are able to demonstrate the production of toxin by this organism. Now simply put, no toxin, no diphtheria. So basically diphtheria is a toxin mediated disease. So we have to resort to such a lab test which would demonstrate toxin production by this organism. Now let's explore the options one by one. Option A says gram stain of throat swab. Now guys, gram stain is not going to help us much because both the toxigenic strains and the non-toxigenic strains of C. diphtheriae are going to be smear positive. As you can see in this picture, we have got a gram stain smear of Corynebacterium diphtheriae. It's a gram positive organism and the word coryne is it actually means uh, club shaped which refers to the uh, bulbous swellings at the ends of this organism. So gram stain is reported as gram positive organisms, gram positive rods arranged as Chinese letter arrangement or cuneiform arrangement are seen. Now Chinese letter or cuneiform arrangement refers to the arrangement of these organisms as letters V, L because of failure of separation of the daughter cells from the parent cells during binary fission. So gram stain is going to be positive both in cases of toxigenic organism and non-toxigenic strain of C. diphtheriae. So even if it is positive, we can't confidently say that this patient is, is, being, uh, is infected with a toxigenic strain of C. diphtheriae. Second option guys is Albert stain of throat swab. Now Albert stain is going to look like this both again of toxigenic and also of non-toxigenic strains of C. diphtheriae. Why do we do Albert stain by the way? Albert stain is pretty specific for this organism per se that is Corony bacterium diphtheriae and it helps us visualize what are known as metachromatic granules also known as Bates Ernst granules or volatin granules or polymetaphosphates or polar bodies as they are called. So basically these granules are located at the poles of this organism that's why they are known as polar bodies and they are nothing but uh, reservoirs of energy and phosphate. Now on Albert stain the picture is reported like this the bacilli appear green and the granules appear blue. The blue blue dots as you can see in this picture at the ends of all the green colored bacilli they are representative of the granules of this organism and please remember these granules are going to be more abundant or prominent in nutritionally deficient conditions again these granules can be seen under the microscope both in case of a toxigenic strain and non-toxigenic strain so option b is also wrong now let's look at option c which says culture on potassium telluride blood agar now let me show you a picture of potassium telluride blood agar which looks like this. This by the way is the best medium if you want to grow coronary bacterium diphtheriae. It's a selective and differential medium. Now guys, on this medium, let's say I have inoculated this medium with the throat swab uh, from taken from a patient. Let's say this patient only uh, who is suspected to be suffering from diphtheria. Now coronary bacterium diphtheriae, whether it is toxigenic or non-toxigenic, if it is there in the sample, it is going to produce black colored colonies. Now this medium is selective because it is going to only show selectivity or partiality or favoritism towards the growth of coronary bacterium diphtheriae and the other throat commensals are going to be inhibited and it is differential because coronary bacterium diphtheriae once it grows it reduces the potassium telluride present in this medium to metallic tellurium which gets incorporated in the colonies imparting them a black color. So it differentiates the organism. All right, but again the problem as I said is both toxigenic and non-toxigenic strains are going to grow. So basically this option is also wrong. When A, B, C are wrong, our answer is going to be what? D. 
Now, let me tell you a little bit about toxigenicity tests. As I mentioned in the beginning, that this disease is a toxin-mediated disease. No toxin, no diphtheria. Now, this toxin is a protein. Protein comes from mRNA. mRNA is going to come from gene. Now, the gene for this toxin is not the part and parcel of the bacterial chromosome or the bacterial plasmid. It is a kind of gift uh, the organism is going to get once it is attacked by a bacteriophage known as coronaphage or beta phage, which in turn actually is the owner of the gene of this toxin. So when a situation happens where a beta phage or coronaphage is going to attack uh, an innocent strain of coronibacterium diphtheriae, it is going to impart the gene for the toxin. It is going to impart the gene for diphtheria toxin to the bacterium. And now the bacterium is, is going to become competent to express the gene for the toxin. That is the bacterium is going to produce the toxin. Now we are going to label this coronary bacterium diphtheria as a toxigenic strain. So it is important to demonstrate the production of toxin of this organism if you want to confidently seal the diagnosis as diphtheria for which toxigenicity tests come to our rescue which are of two types in vivo in vitro in vivo tests were previously done in animals like guinea pig they are banned now they are obsolete and as far as in vitro tests are concerned please remember a few names like lx gel immunodiffusion test then we have got immunochromatographic test or elisa to demonstrate the toxin itself or we can do uh, pcr to demonstrate the gene for the toxin or we can go ahead with cell culture or tissue culture cytotoxicity assay so please remember this the answer is d and over here i would also like to highlight a very important point as i've been saying it's a toxin mediated disease so what do you think the mainstay of treatment uh, of diphtheria should be should it be antitoxin or should it be toxoid the mainstay the mainstay uh, the current problem which this patient is suffering from is by virtue of toxin production. So we have to neutralize the toxin. So the mainstay of treatment of diphtheria is antitoxin and not toxoid. Toxoid in itself, it's a vaccine. You can give the vaccine to the patient, but vaccine is not going to help in the current situation. It is going to induce or inspire or irritate the immune system to produce antitoxin, but it will take some time. So the mainstay of treatment is antitoxin. Please remember that. And also you can go ahead, of course, with the antibiotics. The antibiotics of choice being penicillin or erythromycin, the idea is to kill the organisms so that further production of toxin is going to be reduced. So that's about this question. Now I would request sir to highlight some important clinical aspects of this condition. Thank you Mamta uh, for a wonderful microbiological angle to the whole story. Uh, it reminded me of my second prof actually. I had been thinking that Albert Stain is really great. But uh, today even I am enlightened to know that diphtheria can be present but it may not be necessarily toxigenic strain of diphtheria. So the right answer of this question is toxigenicity test. And to highlight a couple of ENT points related to this uh, diphtheria question. Number one, this membrane is pseudomembrane. And secondly, if you see, there is a whitish membrane on the tonsil but it generally extends to the palate also. So extending to the palate membrane is a clue for pointing the diagnosis of diphtheria as a more probable scenario over there. Third thing is the membrane will bleed on removal. Now, diphtheria in ENT can be asked like this, like a pediatric question overlap with the ENT or a microbiological angle. One unique question of diphtheria in ENT is diphtheria can cause unilateral vocal cord palsy as a complication. So diphtheria can lead to unilateral vocal cord palsy as a complication and they ask what is the management for that kind of palsy which is due to diphtheria in origin the answer is conservative treatment conservative do not mark any fancy answer over there for unilateral vocal cord paralysis due to diphtheria or due to any other cause the first management is conservative because the other cord is going to compensate okay so thank you very much guys keep learning thank dr mamta also for a wonderful microbiological explanation to this question and a big thanks to sir also for enlightening us uh, about so many important clinical aspects of this condition Thank you.